For today's quiz, we're going to have you function as an engineer, and your engineering department is going to need to make a stoplight. You've been hired for this. Your engineering firm probably has a team, and they have made the circuitry. Your task is to now get the outputs correct so that it can make this stoplight. I have this written, and I'll read this to you in full. I have a copy on the back so I can read it also. It reads, your engineering firm is hired by a local municipality to make a stoplight circuit that holds red for half the time, then to give yellow for 10% of the time, and then to hold on green 40% of the time. Your team has already configured the timing circuit. Your task is to configure the outputs of a 417 decade counter. Note the lights are rated at the same voltage of the power, as the power supply, so resistors are not needed, but diodes are used in their place. If you haven't seen our Knight Rider circuit, you probably want to go back and take that quiz first. We show you how to make these circuits, but if not, you can still figure out the outputs. Teachers, if I were you, I'd print out a few of these copies. I have a feeling that students will be able to get this. They're probably just going to need a couple iterations to do it. Typical student responses are mainly going to be questions. They're going to look at this page and they're going to say, wait, some things are different from the last time we used to 4, uh, 4017. And that is true. We removed this grounding line and we put a grounding bar on each one of the lights. That's going to allow the students to uh, draw and configure this circuit on the page. That's what we want them to do. Draw how the circuit is going to be made. They're also going to ask about this voltage um, matching. Well, we have 12 volts here. These volt, uh, the voltage rating on these automotive bulbs is also 12 volts, so we don't have to drop any voltage. And by the way, I just drilled a hole in this thin aluminum so that I can mount them in here. And remember, you don't actually have to make this circuit. You can simply have them draw it out schematically. In the last video, which we made on the 4017, we physically built this. I will show you how I configured this breadboard when we're done. But those are our typical student questions. All right, we're going to provide an explanation for this. Uh, this is one way to draw it, and you can draw it other ways. Uh, remember, we wanted 50% of our time being red. So, look, I'm going to use my pointers, which are uh, resistors, but we want to do 0, 1, 2, 3, and remember, we also need 4. That would be 50%. So you'll see I have 0, and then it goes to 1, and then it goes to 2, then it goes to 3, and then it goes to four. And notice I have diodes on each one of these. So the current from this one can't try to push back into the chip. And then we only need 10%. And remember, we have a decade counter. And we're going to use uh, number five here. And that is going to be the only time the yellow is going to be on. And then we need 40% where it's green. So we'll end up using six seven, um, and then we'll do our eight and our nine, okay? So I've got my greens that come down here. Notice they're jumping the reds and over to the green. So that is what it looks like schematically. It's going to look a little bit different, though, when I put it together. Now, I can make this a little neater next time, but I think you can see that just like our circuit before, I have all my outputs and I'm jumping them to, and I've used different leads here. I've got, hopefully you can see the color coding on this. I've got my brown wire down here. That's my negative. That's my positive, red and brown. And if you've ever wondered why these two are not the same length, whenever I put my leads on here, I want to make sure that they never can touch in short. So, if you're ever working on circuits, try to always make them a slightly different length. These are going to go to either my, my red, my yellow, or my green light bulb that I have hooked up. So I've got my 555 five, five circuit, and then each one of the outputs I simply take down to one of these rows. So this row right here is pure green. Hopefully you can see green, and I've got my four diodes coming in here. The yellow, I only have one. Now, the red, I only have, uh, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five across, but I need six slots. 
So you'll notice that I jump this uh, row with this row. So I can get uh, all of my reds in two rows. But that's essentially how you do it. All right, a real world application. Let's say that you need to change out circuit boards. Well, hopefully your color coding is in good shape. I'm simply gonna put this right back here and I'm just gonna end up using my wires and I'm gonna end up connecting. I've got my red right here. I've got my yellow right here. And I've got my green. And this is why you wanna color code things make it as as accessible as possible. Um, I've got my red right here and one of my wires just fell off. Okay there I'll put my power up oh, and then I need my ground. And then my power. And that complicated circuit goes right back together. So color coding really does help in the real world. So, all right, well, that's your quiz for today.